Hey guys. I just, it's freezing cold here like it is everywhere else in the United States. Well, not everywhere. My hair is all messed up. Uh, flying around, I mean. Um, it's freezing cold. So I am inside, obviously. And so I'm just doing a lot of thinking. And I was thinking as my pretty towels were put away, um, made me go down a whole line of thinking. How many of you guys have towels in your home? You ladies, men maybe not, but um, have towels that no one is supposed to use. They're just there for show. I do and I have for all my life, my mom had. You know, I grew up like that. Those are the towels that are there for company and, and you don't use them. Well, mine are some really high-end ones and um, a famous designer and I've had them, they're old, but they look, I mean, they've never been used, so they look really new. Well, as some of you know, I've had some of my family here, had some of my family here for a while and I have little girls that have chocolate mouths and somehow chocolate got wiped on those white towels. Well, I washed them, and put them away so they won't be used. Because, I mean, first of all, it's not worth any relationship and they're not that important. But it got me thinking, how many other things in our lives do we have that have no importance, really, other than for show? Just for show. Like, how many of you have good china that you never eat off of except once a year? Like, I do have good china that came from Europe that was my mom's that I really like. And I guess out of prudence, because I don't want it ruined, I don't use it. You know, you can't, it's part platinum. You can't wash it in the dishwasher. You can't obviously put it in the microwave. And so I don't use it just because I want to keep it. It's something special. But how many of us have things like that, that we never touch, we never use, except for that possibility? And all this cold weather got me thinking, like how they used to live in one room, one main room homes, you know, maybe with a bedroom separate with a fireplace to keep them warm. Of course, this cold got me thinking along this line with, you know, a fireplace, which was easy to heat, you know, maybe a 300 square foot building, maybe four, if, even if that big, maybe 200 is probably more realistic if that big, you know, and people had their families and they lived, they lived like that for hundreds of years and even before that lived in small small places what have we even christians as a society become you know what have we become so far removed from how we were supposed to live and i'm not saying that it's a sin to be comfortable i mean i don't think it's a sin to be comfortable but i, I think it's a sin to strive for comfort and more and more comfort and more and more luxury and more and more ease of life. I was talking to a friend of mine today and I said, you know, I just was thinking because she has some physical issues and I have physical issues. And if you ever see me rock like this when I'm sitting, like I can't sit for very long. It really hurts. I've got different things going on, but um, somehow that those physical issues could be mercy from God that, um, he is teaching us to live and not be so comfortable and to make it through. You know, and some of us have had to do that for years, decades, for a long time and deal with some sickness, some malady that is very painful. But we put one foot in front of the other and, and we keep going without giving up. We've learned to live and to not be comfortable. And, you know, it made me start thinking, oh, shoot, and I can't share my screen. Darn it. I meant to do this in Zoom, but I was looking up the Christians that are that are persecuted. And just in February of 2020 was a post that 60,000 Christians were tortured, executed in North Korea right now in our time. They're put in prison. They're starved. You know, we wonder why can Christians from other nations be so strong? You know, part of the reason is they live in poverty all the time. They live in desire and lack all the time. You know, it's going to be hard on us because we are so far removed, far removed from that sort of a lifestyle. The very poorest amongst us lives like royalty in some 
to some other people that live right now on the earth today. And, and we just don't even realize it. You know, maybe God is getting us with all these calamities and stuff, getting us back to just seeing what is just important. You know, I keep saying this, you know, if we have a warm bed to sleep in every time I take a hot bath, I thank the Lord. At least I don't want to lie, but pretty much every time I thank the Lord that thank you for this hot bath, that I can lay here in this hot bath and relax and be comfortable or in my warm bed. I can get in and lay on a, a pillow, go in the refrigerator, open the fridge, get some food. Gosh, guys, the very worst among us have it so good, have it so well. And, you know, part of the reason is the live your best life now. You know, don't be sick, don't be poor, have every need met. Christianity that's taught in many of the mainstream churches, that's a lie out of the pit of hell, you know tell a lot of these people in the Bible that they ought to live sickness free and all their needs be met and they be rich and have mansions and that's that's how it will be if they're a Christian. No, you know, that's not how it will be. But we we even as Christians today here in America, we that's infiltrated us. You know, I was thinking earlier and before I say, speaking to myself too, because, you know, I see like, I wear makeup. I like to look nice. I mean, I'm not so bad that I won't let people see me without makeup because I do that a lot, as you can see from my videos. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I like to look good. When I was growing up, I didn't get to have cute, you know, my parents were well-to-do enough, but there was issues going on. And so I didn't get to have cute clothes or wear makeup or anything like that. So I've always enjoyed the girly kind of things just they make me feel good but you know i want to ask myself what has happened to christian women elderly christian women like myself i'm 65 but obviously you know i have married boys there's other women in my family around my age and most of them have had major plastic surgery you know um for their appearances and i think as christian women I mean, like I say, it's just a fine line, I guess, because somebody could say, well, you wear makeup, you care about what you look like. So, yeah, it could just be a, a lesson of degree between that and me. It could be, you know, first, you know, the uh, painting of the eyes and everything was taught by the fallen angels to the women. Do you know that that was something that came through the fallen angels for appearances sake? It wasn't that just didn't organically just happen. Um, it was actually the painting of the eyes was actually something taught by fallen angels. And, you know, I thought to myself, am I doing wrong? When I was younger, when I was like in my 30s, I was really into appearances. You know, it was, and like I said, I didn't get to have that. So I wanted my family to look nice. I wanted to look nice. And we, we traveled and we sang. And I used to think, well, what um, benefit is it for people to see somebody really bedraggled and just messy looking and not attractive. How does it attract someone to Jesus? That was my thinking when I was younger. But you know what people are attracted to? They're attracted to the Jesus that's inside of us. You know, the Bible says that what defiles a man isn't what goes in him, but what comes out of him. You know, people are attracted to the inside of us. And you know, my little 13 year old grandson, his name is Landon, and he is wise beyond his years. And he said something to me just about a year ago. And, you know, 12, 13-year-old boys, they're into appearances. That's just hormones. And God made them that way, right? Well, he's, and there's a lot of pretty women in his family. And um, we were talking and we were talking about, you know, being with the wrong girl and that sort of thing. And he said to me, he said, well, Nani, you know, it doesn't really, he says, a person can be so beautiful on the outside, but because they're so ugly on the inside, it takes away all that beauty on the outside. And I thought, wow, for a 12-year-old boy to have that wisdom, well, let's hope he keeps that wisdom when he gets about 18, 19, 20. I think he will. He's a good boy and he loves Jesus. But you know, it, I mean, outside, we can be perfect on the outside. But if we're ugly on the inside, all this outside work isn't going to, you know, fixing your hair, putting on makeup, going to do a bit of good. And even worse is going under the knife to, um, you know, and I can't say if I had the money, I wouldn't be tempted. Like, you know, these things that hang over your eye, <laughs> I'd really like to get rid of them. But, you know, 
it, it's just not that important to me anymore. Like, you know, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have caught me leaving the house, let alone show my face on, on the internet with no makeup. You just wouldn't have caught me doing it. And now I'm happy with who I am on the inside. And we, that's what we need to do, guys, is work on the things that are on the inside. And concentrate on the things in our homes in our lives that have meaning you know not the superficial things like don't touch the towels that are just for company you know how many of us how many of us have a room in our houses that's just a guest room that we never use that's just for company you know that would have been unheard of a couple hundred years ago you know life was so hard and things so hard to come by and expensive to heat and take care of you wouldn't have had an extra room that nobody was using and I, I'm you know I'm not faulting us all for that but I'm just saying how far have we come from what's important in the world you know to verse so that's kind of what I'm dealing with guys I'm just trying to Lord show me the things that are important show me the things you want to change inside me show me the person you want me to be you know that's what I'm thinking of let me see if I wrote some notes, guys. Is your Chrome? That doesn't make any sense, does it? No. I did write how much of do we do that's just for show? Probably a lot. Hopefully the older, more mature in Christ we get, the less we will do. You know? Hopefully the... Jesus inside of us will come out to the surface and other people will see that. Well, that's all I can think of right now on don't touch the towels. <laughs> Love y'all. Talk to you soon. Bye.